Good evening, listeners. I'm Jake Dalen, and this is Dreadful Discussions. If you're joining us for the first time, please be forewarned, this is a horror podcast, and the topics we choose to entertain you with will be both disturbing and uh, unusual, and often be mature in theme. Well then, let's get down to business, shall we? Tonight we are talking about an urban legend that's been spreading around the tri-state area like wildfire known as a siren, you know, just like the old Greek legends. And now, a brief recap for those of you who are just tuning in. Unlike the old legends, this creature is supposed to be 40 feet tall, and it stalks its prey in the dead of night. It usually uses a variety of camouflage and subterfuge like uh, sound mimicry. That's the siren. Now, to start, I brought a local forest ranger, Jesse Sanchez, in to talk about the scientific consensus on whether or not these creatures could possibly be real. Well, You're on with us, Jesse. I figured when I got the call and you described some kind of Godzilla kaiju, I wouldn't have to do any research since this is more myth than fact. But as it turns out, there are a lot of animals in nature that have similar survival traits to this towering behemoth. I guess whoever came up with the creepypasta figures basing it off of fact rather than fiction would be more frightening. Fascinating stuff, Jesse. So you're saying that the reports of hikers and campers finding these, these massive claw marks in the mountains, they, they might be true. Well, at the moment, I can't say that we have any definitive proof that a creature like this does exist. Only rumors and first witness accounts of survivors, although those are few and far between. Personally, I think it's a lot like people who claim to spot UFOs, just desperate for their 15 minutes of fame. Yeah, I see what you mean. But, I mean, come on! What, what about that kid over in Moon Creek? The, the whole town, it was destroyed, and he blamed the creature. So why would, why would he do that? I can't speak for everyone, Mr. Dalen. Who knows what his broken mind conjured up from such a traumatic experience? <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. And that's what the experts have to say about this bizarre, gibbon-like creature that is blasting the news. But still, I want to hear what everyone else has to say as well. So be sure to call in now and get on the air. Tell us your theories or stories. I told Anna, my assistant, that I was going to take a 15-minute break and grab some coffee. It was bad weather tonight, so I wasn't expecting very many callers. I checked my messages, and I went back to the control room. Learning my other guest for the night, conspiracy theorist Kyle Trescott, was running late due to bad roads. Do you think we should even be airing this right now, Jake? Given all that this area has gone through lately and with the rash of sightings, it just seems like it's in poor taste. Hey, it's a hot button issue. You can't just balk at something because it hits too close to home. This is news. People are chatting. Have I had any callers? I asked. I set down my coffee and picked up the headphones. The station shook a little as lightning and rain thrashed around us. A few. I think one of them might have been a prank, so I just put it on recording. Anyway, I should probably get home, Jake. They say it's going to get worse. Wait, you're leaving me to handle all this alone? <laughs> Isn't that what you always do? Was her retort as I turned on the recording again and said, Sorry folks, I had to get a little bit of a caffeine boost. <laughs> Since it's a stormy night, let's get our first caller from over in Moon Creek. Now, as many of you know, I mentioned before, this town recently suffered at the hands of an F5 tornado. But according to one young man, that storm was the work of something far more monstrous. So, caller, what do you have to say about all of this? There was a short pause, followed by a loud shrill of static and the most peculiar words. I literally dropped the headphones from my ears to avoid the blast of noise. As I rubbed my head sorely, I, I adjusted my volume, sighing. Uh, looks like someone wants to play pranks on the hapless DJ. Uh, that's fine! <laughs> Let's just move on to a caller from, um... Caller from Dunwich County. Hello, ma'am. Hello? My daughter has been going through a rather strange phase in her life, and... If you don't mind... I would love to get some advice on what to do about it. You see, she just turned six, and like most little girls, she has been enjoying tea parties and playing with dolls. Uh, I think you might have the wrong number, I said, but the woman kept talking. Recently, though, I've noticed she spent a lot of time with one particular toy. Her stuffed giraffe, and she is insisting that Mr. Raff is quite alive. 
Suddenly the woman's voice changed and it sounded like a little girl in the background. Mommy, Mr. Raff says that he doesn't like it when you turn the light off at nighttime. He wants to sleep with the night light on so he can keep an eye on me. Mommy, Mr. Raff says he can't take a bath anymore or he won't be able to stay with me. Please don't wash him. At first I didn't mind adhering to her request, but then I noticed something odd. I don't know why I kept listening to the strange woman's story. Couldn't fathom the connection just yet. She would tell me that her stuffed toy would want her to get undressed, or to lay down and spread eagle to the ground. Things that no ordinary six-year-old would ever consider. And sometimes I would hear the giraffe make these god-awful high-pitched noises, as though something was taking over its voice box. Petty. Trench. Station. Slice. Border. The noises were so loud and the house started to shake. It made my body paralyzed when it blasted that sound. You want to know something, Mr. Dalen? It took my daughter from me. It took everything I had. It ripped my house to shreds like cardboard and destroyed it all. It was... No. It is a living nightmare. A spawn of the devil himself. Somehow I broke free from the hypnotic words of the despondent mother and realized that she was blaming her child's disappearance on a... On a mythical monster. I told her to stay on the line, and we'll get back to her, but, but honestly, I was thinking she had to be nuts. Why would this creature hurt innocent people and, and hunt them down? Was it doing this for sport? But it was just a, a mindless creature, wasn't it? I, uh, I shook my head, realizing I was getting distracted again, and uh, open up the next line for the next caller. Is this dreadful discussions? It is. Who's speaking? Commander Hal Tennyson of the United States Marine Corps. I need to say a few words of warning to your listeners about this... creature. Ah, well, thank you for your service, Commander. So are you saying that what we've been hearing of is... Of course it's true. Just because something sounds unbelievable doesn't mean that it can't happen in the real world. There are dozens of species that when first discovered, the scientific community thought it was just a hoax. But I have seen the reality of how these things operate. They are gods. And we are just ants. Outside, the wind whipped as the commander kept talking. It was almost certain that I could hear the distinctive white noise that the siren head was giving out. Because you have opened this door, it's not going to close just because you want it to, son. This thing is a merciless predator, and just talking about it, just when pretending that it might be real, you're inviting it to come find you. Commander, perhaps you could tell the audience about your own experience with the creature. If it will make people listen, I can try. Well, we are all here to keep an open mind, sir. So please, uh, go ahead. My squad was tasked to hunt them down. Five other units had already tried and failed. We were the last line of defense before it reached civilization. But we hardly even scratched the surface of how powerful these giants are. We had brought two army tanks to join in our search near the preserve. We heard of how animals were being crushed and killed like bugs, but we thought bringing more firepower would make a difference. Outside, the wind whipped as the commander kept talking. It was almost certain I could hear those distinctive white noises. He just picked up the tanks and smashed them to bits. We were playthings to it. Darkness and cold clung to our bodies like an extra layer of skin, covering us in this nightmarish, dank smell of fires that were scorching the entire force. As we sat there, shivering and trembling, there weren't any words of comfort. We had thought we could fight a god, and this, this was our punishment for even thinking so. My closest officer was now just a charred corpse, portions of her fingers melted into the bone as the ground shook once more, and the water from above poured down on us. The creature could sense our fear. Again, a rumble of thunder and the sirens outside my station told me I needed to flee, but I needed to hear more. Where was this at, Commander? How close were you to it? I held onto my rifle and searched for what little shelter there was left. There was a crawl space just beneath the bridge, but only a few moments after escaping there, it seemed to turn into an underwater grave for the corpses here. 
I closed my eyes, crying in pain as the rubble shifted and the walls gave way, pushing the bodies around me and into the devastated forest and the open maw of the monster. The line abruptly went dead, and more angry static took its place. My heart beat faster as the power went out. I needed to leave. I grabbed my cell and saw a few missed calls from Kyle as I hurried to get out. First message. Some in the media are saying that this type of investigation that the military has been doing is illegal. And it downright qualifies the organization they work for as being anti-humanitarian. A recent poll shows at least 77% of Americans and Europeans believe that these creatures should be exterminated. What would you say to those people? Who was he talking to? Then I heard the commander's voice on the line and I realized the conspiracy theorist must have interviewed him at some point. Mankind in general has every right to be fearful of these creatures considering the power they possess. And it should be noted that both conventional and nuclear weapons were authorized during the incident in Yosemite. Right now the focus needs to be placed on the studying of these monsters and figuring out how their mutation has allowed them to survive this long. I understand you have been adamant that you did at one time believe that the creatures were actually dormant and the work being done at Arkham was purely scientific. That is correct. I'm sure by now most of the media has construed my intentions as some sort of terrorist, but I assure you I have always been interested in the way these monsters can benefit society as a whole. The untapped biology of this creature alone is enough to consider wanting to study them. Second message. According to our data we collected, your father is the one credited with first discovering the creatures during 1956. Is that right? A second voice came on the line as I rushed out of the station. I didn't recognize it, but the man sounded frightened. For the most part of 20 years, he was affected by the creature in his youth. So why is it that no tissue samples have been taken of it by now? As I stepped out of the station, a mix of smoke and dirt filled the air. As I struggled to breathe, my hands covered my mouth as I searched frantically for my keys. The sky around me felt alive, as I kept watching the rumbling clouds. A shiver ran down my spine. It was a child's terror brought to life. A dark, towering beast lumbering towards the station. Its twin mouths open and rumbling with a, a rage deep and ancient as it began to run towards my station. It, it took a moment to come to my senses and start my car back up and drive away. It's not that we haven't tried. His skin is tougher than the strongest known man-made material. The closest we have come to is a skeleton in the Philippines of another similar creature. That was in 1999, is that right? Yes. Conspirators will tell you it was a planned attack on the Japanese government, but with a recent release of files to the UN, I'm sure all of us will agree that for the most part, the intended result was to study seismic activity in the area. I knew where this line of questioning was headed, but I couldn't wait around to listen to the rest of the messages. I read the engine on and I drove, placing the line on the speaker. I could hardly make out what was being heard as I, as I crashed through the road. I suppose that leads me to wonder then, Doctor. Why no formal report was given to any political government considering that this research had gone on according to those released files for at least 50 years? It was a collective decision that was made before I was born. So, if the choice was made to eliminate the threat of these creatures, would you be against it? There was a pause. Then it dawned on me. This was the man that had discovered these things to be human. Evidence of his involvement in keeping them secret. We as humans need to reevaluate our place on this planet and the natural order of things. Each living organism has a right to exist and serves a purpose even if we do not realize what that means. 
it may be to our detriment to even consider such an outcome. I could see this giant crashing through my station as another call came through. It was Kyle. Where the hell had he been? This is Jake. The, the thing, it's... It's real. It destroyed the station. It's, it's after me, I said, trying to catch my breath. Did you listen to the tapes? How could I not? What does this all mean? I shouted as I drove across town. Somehow the monster was keeping speed with me. I could see it crashing across the horizon, its mighty hypnotic call destroying everything in its path. You don't understand it still? This is not some alien menace that is threatening us. The creature is a titan, a monster from old myth, long dormant in the earth but awakened by men. It's the rightful ruler of this world, and now it's on a path of extermination. It will keep destroying and conquering until it has finished us. All of us. I made it out of town. The thing finally, finally faded from following me, but I could still hear its immense shrieks across the sky. It's hunting me now. Same way it found all the rest of its prey, a predator with immense endless energy destroying anything that stands in its path. I can't in good faith say that this creature is pure fiction any longer. Which is why I leave this final broadcast as a warning for anyone who thinks that, that hearing these tales is just for fun. The creatures are coming. They're coming, and they can't be stopped. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you all thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, or watching tonight's story if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, that means you're probably on the podcast that's available on iTunes, on the Google Play Store, and is now actually available on Spotify and doesn't use as much data. So, hey, that's a thing. If you guys aren't listening on YouTube or Spotify, then I have no idea how else you could have found me. Unless you found one of those books on Amazon. You know, the Creepypasta Collection, Volume 1, Volume 2. Those are things, too. Oh, well. I don't know how you would have heard me there, seeing as this was recorded, like, two years after those came out. Uh. Well, anyway. Thanks for listening, folks. And sweet dreams.